All right, hello, new, new tech class. Uh, this is Mr. Granlin. I'm going to go uh, take you through another tutorial on how to create this kind of cut paper story illustration. And I'm going to talk a little bit about composition, and this is going to be how to do an exterior space. Okay, so I think the first thing to do is make a new layer, and I'm going to call it lines here, and you can make a new layer here. Or you can go to layer, new, layer, there. Okay, and I'm just going to take one of my brushes here, and I'm going to draw, you know, something extremely simple, and then I'm going to make it uh, better. Okay, so we got some sort of line here, uh, you know, tree. Okay, and house. and maybe a cloud okay now this is overly simplistic and um, if you created something like this I'd tell you to make uh, more layers okay and what that means is, is in a picture you need to have a foreground middle ground and background and usually in each ground you're gonna want at least a couple of images or layers um, for each section. So in the foreground, you're going to want at least two or three things in the foreground. In the middle ground, two or three things in the middle ground. Background, two or three things in the background. Okay? So I'm going to back up my drawing and change it accordingly. Okay? So I'm going to start with the foreground. Okay? I'm going to put a couple of big trees right in the foreground, almost kind of like framing the picture. Ah, see, I'm using a rule of composition there. Okay, so I got a couple of trees here. And now I'm going to move to the middle ground, which is going to be behind that. Um, my horizon line is going to be right about there, right around the lower third. Okay, and I'm going to have these rolling hills like that. Do a couple of things. Okay. And now I'm going to put my cottage, uh, I'm going to put the cottage somewhere in the middle ground. So let's go ahead and stick that here. Okay. I might want to move it over so that it hits the rule of third mark. Okay, so I should probably move it over to the left a little bit when I draw it. For now, it's right there. That's fine. And now I'm going to do the background, okay? Maybe I'm going to do some mountains, or apparently a volcano, okay? In the background as well. And then I like those clouds, so I'm going to stick some of them in there, like this. Now this is way different from what I had before. And you can see it has a lot more depth to it. This is way more interesting than that first picture. And this is what I want you to do. And it's very easy to achieve. Okay, so each one of these sections I would actually cut out in my different colors of texture here. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one. This one's going to be green here. And I click on the layer mask. I'm going to make a bigger brush. I'm going to actually make it a harder brush and I'm just gonna kind of sweep across it like that yep that's just good transform it okay I'm just gonna kind of set it down in there and you know what maybe I'm gonna do that I'll sweep across kind of get it like the same that I had it. One thing I like to do is I like to put a little shadow on this. So I actually double click the layer and I'm going to go to shadow, drop shadow, drop shadow. There we are, down at the bottom. Okay. I'm going to change the angle so it kind of shines upward and I'm going to increase the size, maybe even the distance. And you can start to see that shadow appear there. Turn it down a little bit. 
Turn down the opacity. Yep, that's a pretty good shadow. Now when I duplicate that, Control J, and I'm going to set it underneath, and then I'm just going to move it up. See, I already have that creates a little bit of a separation there. And I can go into here, into the layer mask, and I'm going to edit this layer mask. And I'm going to do several of these, and I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like. All right. So here's what my little rolling hills in the middle ground look like. Okay, Pretty nice, especially with the shadows. It creates that separation from layer to layer. Now I'm going to do a tree. Earlier, I grabbed this silhouette of a tree. And I'm going to use this in the foreground here. And I'm going to cut this shape out of a piece of green, um, that green texture that I have. Okay. So this is why it's nice to have these done in um, layer masks, because I can just control J, make a duplicate of it, and then I can delete the right click and delete the layer mask, and then I have my my texture all clean and ready to go. Very easy. I'm just going to size this around the black tree. And now on the black tree, I've already done a good job of cutting it out. Um, if you still have the white background to it, you can go to Select Color Range and select Shadows. Oh, I have the lines layer on. If I do that, or I could use the Magic Wand tool, and that would work pretty good too. Um, just right on a black area. Now it didn't grab all the black areas. Um, I've cut mine out, so I hold control on the keyboard and click on the tree, and then I go to my green copy and click layer mask there, and it gives me this beautiful um, cutout of a tree. And I'm going to select this part here. So I just select part of the layer, and then I'm going to do control T, and I'm going to make this a lot longer. So I'm going to stretch that all the way down. To there and see my tree oh and I need to do it on here as well so I'm going to do control T and stretch that down to the bottom there like that so I can even just select part of a layer and stretch it. And I'm going to set my tree here. And some of you might be saying, well, hey, what about the, the branches? Aren't those a different color? And I'd say, yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to select, maybe just use the lasso tool here. And I'm going to make this brown. So I'm going to go to image, adjustments, hue saturation. And I can change the color here. I want it to be more of like a darker color. Maybe more of like a orangey kind of brownish color. So I'm trying to look for that. Actually, that's not too bad, that gray color there. And that looks pretty good to me. And now if I need another one, I just Control-J. Oh, made two copies. Control-T. And I'm going to size this down. Still in the foreground, but not quite as big. Maybe I'll flip it around so it looks slightly different from the other one. And then put it underneath that one in the foreground. Okay, And it kind of still sticks out because it's uh, it's got that shadow stuff on it too. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of keep working According to my lines, I'm going to use uh, the white textures that I have for the clouds, uh, some blue textures for the skies, and maybe some change the blue textures a little bit for the mountains here, and use my brown textures for the cottage here. And I'll come back when I've kind of filled all that in. And what I'm doing is I'm just cutting out these layers like I did for the, the ground here and setting them in there. 
All right, here's a pretty good basic setup for um, this exterior space. Okay, I have my house, and something I did is I put all the layers that made up the house here into this folder um, that I labeled house. Okay, and I might do the same thing with all my background things. Okay, and I'll put them into a group called background and it just helps me organize uh, quite a bit and then for all the foreground elements and middle ground elements I'll probably just leave them out like this so I can change where the house sits from level to level you know maybe I want it to be up there and then I can control T make it smaller if I need to um, adjust that so it doesn't come in front of the house like that um, all sorts of stuff um, but this is a pretty good basic setup for um, what an exterior space. We have several elements in the middle ground, the house and these two hills, foreground elements, you know, this hill and these two trees, and then several background elements. There's some mountains in the background, um, a couple of mountains, some clouds, and the sky. Okay, And all of this works together to make a much deeper composition and makes it more interesting. All in all, you'll probably have at least 10 layers for each picture to achieve this, okay? Especially for an exterior space. So, make sure that when you're cutting out these images that you're using lots of layers and um, you'll get the hang of it after a very quick while. So, with that, have a good day.